Hello everyone. Welcome to the 24th lecture of the course. We have been discussing the human desire and its fulfillment. And we saw that the human desire is continuous happiness. And its fulfillment is through right understanding, right feeling and right thought. Right feeling and right thought is what is called as resolution. And we have been discussing various components of resolution. So we discussed about right understanding. Then we discussed about wisdom in the previous lecture. And now we'll talk about science. So while discussing the all encompassing resolution, we'll talk about science and science of behavior in this lecture. So we are going to discuss the science, uh, which essentially means how to fulfill the human goal. So the identification of human goal takes place at the level of wisdom. And in science, we are able to analyze and compare and draw programs for fulfilling the human goal. So if you look at the formulation here, so human understanding would mean identifying the human goal, which is there at the level of understanding followed by wisdom. And this is going to be done. And this is going to be ensured at the level of block B1. Now at the level of block B2, we are able to make out how to fulfill the human goal. And here comes the science. So if you go to identify the human goal, you'll see that this is something definite, something universal. Now, when I, now, when you go to make out the science of fulfilling the human goal, then you will see that at the level of feeling, there is definiteness. But when you go to select how to express your feeling, then there's going to be variety. For example, I'm able to see that the feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to me. And this is something going to be definite. This is something which is universal. But when I go to share the feeling of respect, when I go to make a selection there, then it can have a variety. Someone can fold one's hands, someone can touch the feet, someone can just salute, someone can shake hands, isn't it? We can share our feeling of respect through various modes. So there's going to be variety here. And when you are expressing it in your behavior and work, then there's of course going to be a lot of variety, isn't it? So at the level of behavior and work, there's expression outside and there's variety here. Now, the understanding part is something which is innate, which is something universal. Now, if you look at the culture, which is basically expansion of the human thought, isn't it? So you'll see that the feeling is something which is going to be universal, but there is going to be variety. So one part of the culture is going to be definite. Another part of the culture is going to have variety. And when you look at the civilization, which is the cumulative behavior and work practices in the society, then there's of course going to be a lot of variety there. So at the core is the human understanding, isn't it? That is there at the base. Based on this understanding, we decide our goals. And once we are able to see our goal with definiteness, then we decide how to express our understanding and feeling, and then we express it outside. So we are going to discuss about the human thought and there we are going to talk about the science. And in this lecture, we are particularly going to talk about science of behavior. So when you look at the science, where we are making the selection for expression of living in coexistence. So we are able to see at the level of understanding that the whole existence is there as coexistence the units are submerged in space. And as an outcome, we are able to see that the nature is there in harmony. In the nature, every unit is self-organized and every unit is participating in the larger order. So this is something which is there at the essence of the science. And when you go to express this understanding, this feeling, then we are able to fulfill the relationship. And when you go to fulfill the relationship in between human and human, then this is called as behavior. And when you go to fulfill this relationship between human and rest of nature, it is termed as work. So when you go to detail about, so when you go to talk about science, so essentially we have to talk about the participation in the larger order as an essence, and then we have to detail upon the behavior and work. So, Science would be how to ensure the fulfillment of human goal. So it's thought, it's expectation, and it's detailing. So as you said that at the level of science, which is there in block B2 of the imagination. 
So when you go to talk about science, we have to talk about how to ensure fulfillment of human goal. And there we have to talk about the thought expectation. And then the detailing would be like in terms of three things. One, science of behavior. And what does science of behavior mean? How to ensure justice, that is mutual happiness in human-human relationship. And if you are able to develop this competence to ensure justice in our mutual relations, you see that in that process, we are able to develop our competence to ensure justice in every relationship, right from family to the world family. So if I'm able to contemplate upon the feeling of trust in me, then I have this trust and intention of every human being. And we see that the competence that we develop to fulfill the relationship within our family, that competence helps us to ensure mutual happiness in every relationship, be it inside the family or outside the family. And this can get extended up to the whole world family. Similarly, the science of work would mean how to ensure mutual enrichment in the human and rest of nature relationship. <clears throat> and you see that as we had discussed in UHB2 also. So when I'm able to see my relationship with the nature, when I'm able to identify my needs rightly, then I'm able to ensure prosperity for myself. And then I'm also able to preserve the rest of nature. We talked about all the orders of nature earlier. So this kind of competence is there. And here we'll see that again, the understanding part is there in me, which is universal, which is definite. And when you go to analyze, when you go to select how to ensure this mutual enrichment, then this may vary from place to place, time to time, person to person, isn't it? So if I am living in a mountainous region, then my approach would be of one kind to enrich the nature. If I'm living in a plateau region, my approach would be some other kind. If I'm living in the coastal regions, then the approach would be a different kind. So the signs would vary from place to place, person to person. And then you see that the essence, that is the feeling of fulfilling the human goal would be something common. But when you go to analyze and select, then there will be a variety. Similarly, the third thing is science of participation in the larger order. And then we have to understand the societal systems. And, then and there we have to look into the dimensions of human order so that we are able to participate in the human order at every level. And we are able to fulfill the human goal from family order to the world family order. So when I'm able to have this competence so that I can ensure orderliness in my family, I'm able to fulfill the needs of the family, I'm able to fulfill the relationship in my family then that competence then that competence helps me to also fulfill the human goal also fulfill the participation at every level of my living at every in every dimension of society going up to the world family order so i hope you are able to see this so the detailing would include the following things the plans programs the implementation strategies results evaluation isn't it so we'll kind of expand upon all these. So we have to draw plans, we have to draw programs, we have to make implementation strategies. Then you have to evaluate the results, isn't it? All these will be included. So are you able to see this? Now, this is something being said in a nutshell, but when you go to talk about science of behavior, so the feeling is something which is universal, but at, the level, but at the level of expression, we have so many things to analyze. We have so many things to uh, consider while making a selection for our behavior. Similarly, the feeling of ensuring mutual enrichment is going to be something common, but when you go to make a selection, there will be a lot of variety. So here would also come skills, try to learn the skills so that we are able to fulfill the goal. So at the level of dimension of thought that is block b2 you have to acquire the skills you have to learn the skills and if you look at it so many technologies that we are uh, you'll see that so many skills that we are learning so many techniques that we are learning will all be a help here in fulfilling the science of behavior science of work and science of participation in the larger order so the, for the courses that we are studying today you can try to relate those courses with the science of behavior, work, and participation. 
So if we talk about science of behavior, the essence is to ensure justice, isn't it? And justice means mutual happiness. Now, it is uh, said in very few words, mutual happiness, but when you go to analyze your relationships in your family also, let's say there are four people, let's say there are four people living in a family and in that small family also, you see that ensuring mutual happiness in continuity in every relationship requires a lot of exercise within you, isn't it? If the feelings are not clear, you have to work so much. And you can see that we get into distress, we get into confusion, contradictions, because we are not able to ensure justice in our relationship. And then we are able to see the need for understanding the feelings. So this is something that we have to see how we can ensure justice in our family and go up to the world family. I'll give you a simple task. Choose any one member in your family. Okay. And try to make sure that you are able to ensure justice with that person every time in your every interaction and you'll see how much you have to work upon yourself if your feelings are not definite then of course the justice is not going to be ensured even if the feelings are definite but the others feelings are not definite then also you have to work a lot upon yourself to develop the science of behavior so that you are able to ensure mutual happiness so i'll say that there's a lot of work to be done here while ensuring mutual happiness but we see that this is the process in which we develop as a human being. And when we are able to develop this kind of competence, we become a part or let's say we become a pillar of the undivided society. And again, I'll say that we are saying this in just two words, undivided society. But if you look into the meaning of this, there's a lot to explore here. We can see that the society today is divided on so many bases, you know, on the basis of beliefs, on the basis of caste, creed, gender, isn't it so much of a struggle and strife in the society and but we naturally do not accept this kind of society we naturally accept an undivided society so in this lecture we are saying things in quite brief but we see that there's a lot of but you will see that there are a lot of things to explore on your part so that you are able to be a pillar of undivided society and then only we can say that we are living with human consciousness when we are able to ensure our participation in undivided society, right from family to the world family. So think about this, isn't it? There is so much to explore here, how to ensure your role in the undivided society. Now, this is a brief recap of what we have discussed earlier in which we too also. So we need to ensure harm in the family, that is justice, and that will go from family to the world family and when you talk about relationship, there are four things to be observed. One thing is that relationship is there, it's very much there. And it is between one self and the other self. It is not between one body and the other body. Okay, body is just an instrument as we explored earlier. The feelings are there in the self. The one who gets happy or unhappy is the self. So the relationship exists between one self and the other self. The body and physical facilities are utilized as instrument in fulfilling the relationship. We also see that there are feelings in relationship and the feelings are also there in the self, not in the body. Something that we said uh, very clearly in the previous course also, that all these feelings are definite. They can be recognized with definiteness. They can be understood. They can be contemplated. They can be shared. And when we are able to fulfill these feelings, when we are able to evaluate these feelings, then we can see that it leads to mutual happiness. So to ensure mutual happiness, first of all, we have to be able to recognize the feelings which are acceptable naturally. Then we have to fulfill the feelings, then evaluate it rightly so that it ensures mutual happiness. Isn't it? So much to be done in ensuring mutual happiness. Now, if you go to identify the feelings which are acceptable to us naturally in the relationship, so there are nine feelings. Trust is the foundation value, the basic feeling with which the relationship starts. Then we are able to understand and see the feelings of respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude. And finally, we are able to contemplate upon the feeling of love. And this is the whole journey, starting from trust and going up to love. Even if you are able to have the feeling of trust stated in us, you'll see that there's a lot of shift in our living, isn't it? in our behavior, in our thought. And when we are able to have the feeling of love, then we are able to participate very naturally 
for an undivided society. Now, with this clarity, we get the understanding of justice. So, justice has four components: recognition of the feeling, fulfillment of the feeling, evaluation of the feeling in human-human relationship, leading to mutual happiness. And the mark of justice is this mutual happiness. If I am able to ensure mutual happiness in my relationship, then only I can say that I am living with justice. And that's why I gave you an assignment that you choose any relationship and try to ensure justice in that relationship every time, isn't it? And then you will see that we start developing in our relationship. We not only work on developing our own understanding, but also we try to be complementary to the other in developing the understanding of the other. And then very naturally, we are able to ensure justice from family to the world family. We are able to be a pillar of undivided society. So think over this. Uh, I'm not going to detail much upon this because you have already studied about the feelings. So we'll not detail upon all these feelings. We'll just define them and try to recapitulate what we have discussed earlier. But I hope you are able to relate the input that you are getting here. Now, what is happening in this course, the clarity that you gained about the self, about the existence, this will further assure the feelings in you. This will further get the feelings stated in you with more clarity, with more commitment. So, as you said, that relationship is there, it already exists, you just need to realize it. So, we do not have to create relationship. It is also with there with, <clears throat> it is there with the people whom we are acquainted with. It is also there with the people whom we are not acquainted with. For example, if you are traveling in a train, you may not be acquainted with any other passenger in the train, but there is already, <clears throat> but there is a relationship there, isn't it? If somebody else comes and occupies your birth in the train, you feel that relationship is violated. If you try to now, if you start taking your lunch and you open your lunch box while you are sitting in a train and you are not asking the other whether the other would like to have a share of it, you feel a little embarrassed. Why is that happening? Because we are very naturally related. So we are related with every human being and that relations already exists between oneself and the other self. And the base of relationship is the feeling. So you see that in every relationship, there are two parts. One is the feeling and the other is expression. So expression will have a variety, but the feeling is something which is very much definite and universal. So whether we are acquainted with the other person or not, we may have the feeling of trust for the other. We are able to see that, yes, the other intentionally wants to make me happy. I also intentionally want to make the other happy, even though we are not able to fulfill it. And as you said that there are the nine feelings in the relationship and they can be understood with definiteness. And justice in relationship is understanding the relationship, acceptance of relationship, having the right feelings within oneself, and then expressing these feelings so that we are able to rightly evaluate these feelings so that it is able to lead to mutual happiness. So, so many things are involved while ensuring mutual happiness in the relationship. So having the right understanding and right feeling within me leads to my happiness. So if I'm having the, so if I'm having the right feeling in me, there's the right understanding, I'm happy within every moment. Now, when I share the same thing with the other and express it to the other and the other is able to rightly evaluate it, then it leads to his or her happiness too. So one important thing is that the evaluation is also a very important component. Maybe you are having the right feeling, you are able to express it rightly, but the other carries a different notion about expression. Say, so let's say you are there in some part of the world where people do not like touching feet and to share your feeling of respect to touch the feet of the other but the other is not able to evaluate it rightly so the mutual happiness will not be ensured that very moment but when you are able to share that in our country we share our feeling of respect in this manner then the other will start feeling respected so this may have some difference in evaluation to the begin with but when the evaluation is done rightly then of course it leads to mutual happiness and then we are able to develop this competence so that we are able to participate in the happiness of every human being. I need not express my feeling of relationship with every human being, but my feeling is there for happiness of each and every human being. Isn't it? And as and when the need arises, I express it, I share it.
So that is the meaning of being a part of undivided society. Now the complete value is a feeling of love. And essentially this is a realization of coexistence, which leads to acceptance of being related to all. So when I able to see that through space, I am related to every human being. Even I am related to each and every entity in this nature, each and every unit in this nature. So I naturally have the feeling of love for every human being, isn't it? And then this naturally gets accepted in me that yes, I'm very much related. So every moment I have the feeling of being complementary to the other or ensuring happiness in the other. Every moment I'm able to make the selection to make the other happy. And this is the level to which our competence can go with right understanding, with the realization of coexistence. In tradition also we have placed it very highly and this is something that we would like to accomplish at a personal level also. And if this kind of feeling gets ensured through education, then of course in, gen in few generations to come, we are going to have an undivided society and we can contemplate upon this, we can think about this, how to ensure this competence within oneself. Now it all starts with identifying that one is there in coexistence with the other human being. Right. So the acceptance of relationship with other human being is something which is called as affection. But to see that when we are able to contemplate upon affection, when we are able to share our feeling of affection with the other, then that competence gradually expands to the feeling of coexistence with all human beings. And then to all each and every unit in nature, something that I mentioned right now. So we are able to feel related to not even human beings, but even animals, birds, plants, and every physical unit in the nature. That is the level to which our competence can go with the feeling of relationship. And you just think that if I have to express this for every human being, isn't it? what would be the science of that? What would be the science of behavior? So this is the level to which we'd like to go in terms of our competence. And feeling of love is expressed in the form of kindness, beneficence, and compassion. Something that we explained earlier. The feeling is there for all, and it is expressed to those in contact. So I can have this feeling in me every moment for every human being. But we express this to the person whom we are in contact with when we get the opportunity or the occasion to interact with the other. And this feeling of love is the foundation of undivided society. So I hope you are able to relate this. Try to contemplate upon this word undivided society and see how much we need to work upon oneself so that we are able to be a part of undivided society or we are able to be a pillar, a foundation of undivided society. Now, briefly recapitulating all the feelings. So as you said, love is the feeling of being related to all. This is expressed as different feelings depending upon the specific cases of relationship. So when you talk about trust, trust is the feeling of assurance that the other intends my happiness and prosperity. That is the other is in relationship and not in opposition. So I'm able to see that the other person naturally accepts to be in relationship with me, naturally accepts to make me happy and not make me unhappy. And thus the relationship starts. So that's why it is called the foundation value because every relationship starts with this feeling that the other naturally accepts to make me happy. Now with this, we are able to see that not only that the natural acceptance is common, we are also able to see that the other person has the same potential as mine, same program of living with happiness as mine. So we are able to see that the other person is similar to me the other person is like me. So with the feeling of trust, I'm able to rightly evaluate the other. If I doubt the intention of the other, I'm not able to evaluate the other rightly. But if I'm able to have trust on the other, then I'm able to also see that the other is similar to me, other is like me. And I'm able to, <clears throat> and I'm able to see my complementarity with the other. So I'm able to see that if I have less competence than the other, then I try to understand from the other. But if I have more competence than the other and competence here means right understanding and right feeling. If I have more competence than the other, then I try to be complementary to the other in terms of developing the right understanding in the other, in terms of developing the right feeling in the other. 
but before that i have to assure the other in my relationship affection is the acceptance of the other as one's relative that is feeling of being related once i have the feeling of trust and respect then only i am able to feel related to the other now when i have the feeling of affection for the other then the natural outcome is the feeling of care and guidance so care is the responsibility and commitment for nurturing and protecting the body of one's relative so i become responsible to the body of the other as well as the self of the other now becoming responsible to the body of the other is of care and becoming responsible to the self of the other in terms of developing right understanding and right feeling is the feeling of guidance so this naturally comes there in me when i have the feeling of affection then there are three more feelings which i am able to see within so i am able to see that there are so many people who have made effort to develop right understanding in me right feeling in me to develop competence in me to develop excellence in me and i am able to accept their effort that is called as gratitude isn't it so acceptance for those who have made effort for my excellence i am also able to see that there are people or there have been people in the tradition who have been able to ensure competence that is excellence in completeness so that acceptance of excellence in the relationship for the other that yes the other person has completeness of right understanding right feeling right thought this acceptance in me is seen as reverence i naturally have the feeling of reverence and glory means that i am able to accept the effort that the other person has made for developing excellence within oneself and then i accept the efforts made by the other and that is the feeling of glory and then with all this competence we have the feeling of being related to all which is the feeling of love which is the complete value so we start contemplating upon these values one by one and then we are able to develop this competence within oneself so i hope you are able to relate yourself to these feelings and then you can also evaluate how much you have been able to develop yourself since when since the time you attended course uhb2 how much of these feelings you are able to see within yourself or what has been the transformation in you in terms of fulfilling these relations in terms of fulfilling these feelings in your relationship so this is something to ponder upon this is something to evaluate for oneself now there could be two scenarios one is we are having the right feeling within and the other scenario could be we are trying to borrow the feeling from the other so this state of having the right feeling within is possible only when you have the right understanding that is you have the understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and you are aware of it and you are guided by it and this ensures that you have the right feeling within which ensures happiness in you and this is something definite continuous and unconditional and we will see that right understanding and right feeling is your property now it is not dependent on the other and you are in a state of being self organized that is swatantra so this right feeling gets stated within only with the clarity of relationship harmony and coexistence and then we are not dependent on anything outside for our happiness but generally what we see that we try to borrow the feeling from the other we try to get the feeling from the other and that happens because within oneself we don't have any definite feeling it keeps fluctuating if the other expresses the right feeling you feel happy if the other expresses wrong feeling you feel unhappy and this indicates that you don't have the right understanding so if you are dependent on the other for your happiness to get some favorable feeling that simply indicates that the right understanding of the feeling is missing or lacking and you have to develop the feeling within your own self so you'll see that as we develop the right understanding the right feeling gets stated within and we naturally share these feelings with the other so in terms of feeling you are dependent on the other if you are not able to contemplate upon these feelings within yourself and then you are in state of enslavement isn't it now just see whether you would like naturally to be in this kind of state or not where are we presently are we living with this kind of competence or we are living with this kind of 
lack of competence. So this is something to be made out. So try to evaluate your own state of competence. Try to evaluate for yourself. Where are you right now on the left hand side or the right hand side? So you'll see that as we go on exploring within oneself, we are gradually able to transition from this state to this state. And this is the development of consciousness of the self. So in relationship, we need to ensure the right understanding within oneself so that we have the right feeling stated in us. And then there's harmony in the activities of the self and there's happiness within. Now, when I share the right feeling with the other in my behavior, isn't it? Then the other is also able to taste the right feeling. The other is able to evaluate my feeling. And then it's not that I only remain happy, the other also becomes happy. And then the mutual happiness is ensured. So one thing is that mutual happiness may not result the very moment when you behave with the other. But if you have the right feeling stated in you and you are able to express it to the other and the other is able to rightly evaluate it, though the other may take some time, the other will feel happy. So maybe your parents guided you in your early childhood and you are not able to understand their words. But today you may feel the importance of those words. So when you remember their behavior, okay, 10 years back, 20 years back, then also you feel happy about that, isn't it? So the mutual happiness may take some time, but if your feeling is right, then this is sure that the other person, whenever evaluates it rightly, it will ensure happiness in the other also. So you'll see that love is recognized as the complete value because with it, there's completeness in the feelings. With the feeling of love, we are able to express all the other feelings as and when required. All the other feelings are simply the expressions of love in specific state or situations. So essentially we have to contemplate upon love. When I try to see my relationship with every human being, it's natural that I am able to see my relationship with those in my family, those around my family, with my, in my workplace. And then gradually I'm able to have this feeling with, and then naturally this feeling of love that I have for the entire humanity will also get expressed in my mutual relations, isn't it? Trust has been recognized as the foundation value because the feeling of acceptance for the other is the minimum expectation in relationship in every situation with people who are known and with people who are even not known. And the need for this feeling is felt at all times and with all. So trust is the foundation. Trust is the foundation and love is the completion. So if I'm able to have the feeling of love within me, then naturally I will have the feeling of trust in me. But the feeling of love is not going to be stated in a day. So I have to start contemplating upon the feeling of trust. This may also take a lot of time, isn't it? So the feeling of love will get founded upon the feeling of trust. Once I have the feeling of trust, then only I can contemplate upon other feelings in my relationship. And a time will come when I'm able to see my relationship with every human being, isn't it? So give a thought to this, okay? So trust is the foundation. So when we talk about the science of behavior, okay? So essentially I have to ensure all these feelings which are naturally acceptable to me, within me. And then when I go to fulfill the relationship, I analyze, I make a selection and I express to the other so that I'm able to ensure mutual happiness. Now with this, we have some assignment for you. So we have seen that science can be expanded as science of behavior, work and participation. So in the present day science, are we taking care of all three or only the science of work? And in that too, all aspects of it or only some limited aspects. So you'll see that in the current day science, mostly we are focused upon the form and property of physiochemical things. We are not even able to see the participation of the physiochemical things rightly. So you can see that when we try to understand the science in totality, okay, there's a lot to explore. So try to find it out at a personal level. Try to look into the books of science and see whether we are able to talk about science of behavior as well as work, as well as participation, or we're only talk about, talking about 
some limited aspects of a physiochemical entity. Next, in the science of behavior, what will be the priority of understanding feelings and physical facility? And what is the role of physical facility in it? So the physical facilities work as an instrument, we'll see, but you have to make out the priority among the three. Okay. And try to relate it to your day-to-day -day life. In your own participation, what is the role of physical facility? What is the role of feeling? And what is the role of understanding? Generally, we may assume that physical facility is very important to ensure mutual happiness in a relationship. We may assume this, but again, try to question it and try to see it for yourself, whether this applies to you also. What is more important, the physical facility or the understanding part? And thirdly, in the science of participation, what do you see as your role at different levels from family order to nation to <clears throat> the world family order? And does the present education system prepare you for all these roles? What change is required in the present education system? Now here also you'll see that generally when you enter into education, your goal might be focused upon getting a good job, a handsome salary and so on, so that you are able to earn for your family. Are we able to see that we have a role to play in the world family also? Are we able to see our participation at every level? going from family to the family cluster, to the nation, to the whole world. And also try to make out whether the syllabus and curriculum that we are sharing with the students today, does it take care of your participation at every level or it is primarily focused on a few aspects only? And if that is the case, then what change is required in the education system today? So again, give a serious thought to this. So in today's lecture, we talked about the science, what science essentially means, and we detailed upon the science of behavior. In the next lecture, we'll talk about science of work and participation. So that was all for the lecture today. Thank you.